John Benjamin Hickey, who appeared on The Big C as Sean, the homeless brother of a woman with terminal cancer, played by Laura Linney. What first attracted you to the role? Uh, well, all of what you just said was the first thing that attracted me, starting with, first and foremost, Laura Linney. I mean, you know, Laura is a uh, fearless, great, one of our great actors, actresses, and uh, we went to school together 25 years ago, uh, Juilliard. We went to Juilliard together, so we're friends for many, many, many years, colleagues we'd worked together before. And so her being attached to this, I knew it was going to be edgy and and she would really want to go to some strange places. Um, and, uh, and then the character was just, I mean, he's homeless by choice. He's manic depressive. He's, uh, he's a freegan dumpster diver. Um, he's a mass of contradictions. So, you know, it was just like a field day for an actor to be able to uh, get to bite off a lot of that. And, you know, I'd, I'd played a lot of doctors and DAs and nice quiet suburban dads in my career and this was a chance for me to really um, go out on a limb so I you know just about everything attracted it to me uh, but, now, mm -hmm. uh, well you and uh, Laura Linney have a very convincing uh, uh, dynamic as bickering siblings did that previous relationship that you two had together help develop that on screen sure I mean you know I think she knew that I was uh, I could be pretty snarky um, and, you know, I like to kind of push her buttons as well in life. Um, so I think she really was the first one to see that, like, the dynamic that we had personally could really add to this. The part of Sean uh, was written as a much younger brother to Kathy. I think he was, like, in his 20s and was very slacker, you know, kind of that, um, that generation, uh, generational thing. And Laura said, you know, I think it should be you. I think you should come in and read for this and fight for it because I think the character of my brother, Kathy's brother, should be a slightly older brother, a shoulder that she could at least try to lean on. He wasn't always there for her, and when he was, his shoulder was, you know, had been living outside, so it wasn't like <laughs> the cleanest shoulder in the world. Um, and I really, once she described that to me, I really saw the potential in, um, in having that kind of a relationship, that sort of slightly older brother fraternal relationship, and they, I, I knew that Laura and I could really go to all the kind of contradictory places that they, these two characters went with each other. I mean, they, they brought out the best and the worst in each other. And, um, and you know, Sean was a complete, is a completely free-spirited character, except for when it comes to his sister, and then he can become rapidly conservative about the choices that she needs to be making. So, um, you know, like any great sibling relationship, it's filled myriad complications, filled with myriad complications. Now, a, a lot of TV shows and movies have been made about disease and, and, and dying, but this show is unique in that it showed us that process over the course of four seasons. Uh, did emotions run especially high when filming those final episodes? Oh, man, yeah. They were... Uh... You know, first of all, it was like this wonderful gift that Showtime gave us. Uh, Showtime and Sony decided to go for one more season. I think at the end of the third season, there was enough of uh, enough ambigu ambiguity to to maybe like let it go. The show might go away, and Kathy just sort of like literally drifted off into the sunset on a boat. And so when they said we want you guys to come back and we want to do it as a mini series, um, four hour long episodes, we'd only done half hour. So we had this format that was very very exciting in which to say goodbye to the character, goodbye to the show, and finish this extraordinary narrative that we had, you know, that these writers had created. Um, so I think we went into it with an enormous amount of excitement and uh, so happy, um, grateful that we were getting to do it. And then we got hit with all that happens, all that happens to Kathy, all that happens to that family. And it was deeply emotional and um, in so many more ways than I think any of us bargained for, because it was us not only saying goodbye to that character and all of our characters, but to each other as actors, you know. We'd made such a family, and we knew we weren't going to be seeing each other like we had been over the past four seasons. And, and I, I, you know, for those of people who saw it, the scene when, the, when Adam, Gabriel Basso, who's so brilliant, graduates... Um, uh, it surprises his mom with an early graduation. Uh, that 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 was a very emotionally 
devastating day for us. It was very difficult to get through uh, those scenes because, you know, we were, we'd were we watched this kid grow up. We were saying goodbye to each other as families. We had to tell a lot of fart jokes that day to keep from crying. <laughs> you know, I think whenever you're doing something that, you know, potentially heavy, as actors, you really do have to go to very kind of light places in between stuff in order to kind of keep your balance, you know. It's a tricky, it's a tricky balancing act. Now, uh, the the fourth and final season of, of The Big C was the four one-hour episodes compared to the half hours you did before. Was shooting those last episodes in terms of scheduling uh, a lot different than shooting the half hours in previous years? Uh, you know, in a word, it, there was more breathing room, you know? I mean, I think the writers felt that way. I think uh, certainly we as actors playing these characters felt that way when suddenly you have you know, 30 more minutes in which to tell your story, um, you could feel, and it wasn't like they wrote more, there was just opportunity for silence more. And I, I think actors, you know, love silences, love being able to let looks, you know, speak volumes. And somebody like Laura, you know, just heard that smile of hers alone uh, is so deep. Um, so I think, you know, I think really it, it gave us a chance, all of us to breathe. And, and the show, I think for so many seasons, for the three seasons prior, really um, went to extraordinary and amazing lengths to keep a real comic universe created around this person with this terminal illness, which of course is the opposite of funny. Um, and they succeeded greatly in doing that, but we did some really crazy shit and all that time. Ooh, can I say that word? We did some crazy yeah. stuff. We did some crazy <laughs> stuff. And I mean, I ran a, a, a gay phone sex line and my character was, you know, identified as straight. I, I got involved in a thruple. Um, you know, we did some nutty, nutty stuff. But in that fourth season, we all felt like laser focused on Kathy and on supporting that storyline to its end. And I, you know, I don't want to say inevitable end because I don't think, I, and none of us were trying to say that cancer, that kind of cancer is a death sentence or, but um, this particular story, I think it was necessary for it to conclude that way. And, uh, and we felt like we were, the focus was so much uh, greater this season and we we're so, so happy to get to do that. Now, as you've mentioned, in addition to being very emotional, the show approached the subject of cancer with, with a sense of humor that, that's rare to see. Mm -hmm. um, were you ever concerned when starting up on this show that that tone might put some people off or, or that not everyone would sort of get, that, you know, get into that tone? Sure, yeah. You know, and I think that uh, it's a measure of the show's success that it, it, it could divide people. I mean, I think there's probably people out there who, you know, find the notion of making a comedy about cancer anathema. Those two are just mutually exclusive. They do not go together. Um, uh, but, I, I, you know, so many of our fears were um, set aside by, by, I mean, you know, we, we didn't have huge audience for our show, but we had a very devoted fan base. And so many people were survivors or like so all of us either you know survival or or has have we you know people have lost someone to cancer and um so many people came up to us and said the thing i love most about the show is how funny it is and how imperfect all the characters are like kathy does not deal with her disease in a saintly fashion you know she acts out a lot my phone's ringing it's probably my agent hopefully with a new job <laughs> um, stop in a second. I'll call you back. Uh, you know, um, uh, so I think people really appreciated its um, irreverence uh, in the face of this disease. You know, and they 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 would tell they you know come up to all of us and said that I love that Kathy was a screw up. I love that brother and sister behaved just as selfishly before her diagnosis, after her diagnosis than before. That life goes on and you hopefully learn how to deal, but that's a day-to-day, -day, that's on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? You, a lot of the times you're just uh, 
flying by the seat of your pants. And I think Kathy was a great character who really flew by the seat of her pants and acted out on some crazy impulses. And people really appreciated that. And you've done a lot of film and TV work, but you're also a theater vet. Would you say theater is your first love? How good does that picture of New York look behind me? See, I'm kind of, I'm kind of <laughs> leaning over a little bit because there's my hometown right there, Central Park. Um, That's great. I uh, know it does, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done. You said it was about theater and television. You used to ask, right? I started. Yeah, would you say theater is your first love? Um, I think you know. Yeah, sure. Because um, I, I I come from the theater. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. And, I, uh, and I've had very rich experiences in both television, film, and, and in the theater. But, you know, being in a Broadway play, being in a hit Broadway play, and I've been lucky, I've been in a, a few of them, it's like you're just the, the epicenter of the universe, you know? It's like it all happens that day. All of your energy is going into that performance that night, and it's a conspiracy between you, your fellow actor, the writer, director, and the audience, but it's mainly at that, that night between you and the audience, and you are making it happen. It's not happening in an editing room. It's not coming out six months from now or a year from now. It is that night, and that is a kind of uh, adrenaline rush and excitement that is, um, that is really extraordinary, and I've talked about this before. In my second season of The Big C, I was shooting the show by day, and I was doing The Normal Heart, the great Larry Kramer play, at night, and having to rush from Stamford, Connecticut into New York City to make my stage, my curtain every night was uh, so um, hard and uh, crazy and confusing and fun. And I remember, and exhausting, and I, I remember in like the first or second week of you're trying to get my uh, motor going for all this, I, I, maybe somebody heard me complaining. Laura, I think, said to me, you know what, nobody wants to hear you complain about having the two best jobs in New York right now, so just keep your mouth shut, keep your eye on the prize, and keep going. Sounds like my eye on the Tony, that's not what I meant. Keep your eyes on your job <laughs> and do it, and it was, it was great advice, and, you know, sorry to stray from your, your question, but yeah, man, you know, working is a blast and getting to getting to do all of those things is amazing but there's something about the theater that is irreplaceable the normal heart was a very grueling emotional play and you were filming you were uh, acting in that while you were filming the big c how difficult was that just just to get into those such different tones and different mind spaces at yeah. the same time um I, I can't remember who said this, but we were having a conversation, Oliver Platt and I were having a conversation the other day about the difference between television, film acting, and theater acting. And, and you know, on many, in many respects, it's, there's no difference. You know, being alive to the possibility of the moment, being in the moment, breathing and being present, it's the same. Good acting is, is, is that, is being alive to the possibility of the moment. And, um, but in the theater, you get to say the words from the beginning to the end. So your, your, your story is there for you. It's built to go from here to here, and you just say the words from the beginning to the end. That's what it is. In television, you know, you're shooting the last scene first, the first scene last. You sometimes don't know where you are at any given moment. So it's a different kind of energy, and that gear shift... Um, from one to the other is, uh, I think is, you know, is best, I think I always felt like I was at my best when I left my gear shift to my unconscious. You know how like when you, you sometimes do your best homework as a writer, as a journalist, as an actor, when you're just lying awake staring at the ceiling at night, not when you're taking notes, not when your brow's furrowed and you're intensely trying to learn something, it's just when you like let your mind expand and I would get in the back of the, the, the van that would take me into work and we'd turn on the bridge, which is a great serious radio station that plays soft 70s hits from my childhood. And, you know, so I'd listen to a great Kenny Loggins song and I would just kind of like zone out to get my head around uh, where I had to be, you know, going from a TV show about a woman dying of cancer to a play about the beginning of the AIDS epidemic in which my character 
uh, dies. So it was a it was a pretty uh, emotionally taxing, you know, um, thing that was going on. Transfer of energies that was going on, but it was also exhilarating, incredibly exciting. Uh, your co-star in the Normal Heart was Joe Mantello. You'd worked with him previously when he directed you in the stage and film versions of Love, Valor, Compassion. What was it like to act opposite him after being directed by him? Dude, your homework is fantastic. I, I love that. Um, um, it was just, you know, it was great. You know, you're, you're so lucky. When, you, when you've been around as long as I've been around, and I have been, I remember I read something when I was doing the Normal Heart that would, there's a piece on me somewhere and said, veteran actor John Benjamin Hickey. I was like, veteran? I'm, I'm a veteran already? Um, Joe and I had known each other 20 years. He's directed me in Love, Valor, Compassion, the play uh, and the movie, and in five other plays. Um, uh, and these, these were years ago. We, haven't, we actually hadn't worked together as director and actor in, uh, in quite a few years. I need to do something about that. Mm -hmm. um, but then when uh, he was doing, he was the first one on board to do this normal heart reading as a benefit. And he came to me and said, I really think you should do this part with me. And the part that I played, it had never been played by an actor the same age as Joe's character. Um, it had always been played much younger. And, um, and to get to act with somebody who I've known for so long and I have so much respect for and am such good friends with, you know, that kind of, that doesn't guarantee chemistry at all. You know, they say, you know, it's, they say a lot of husbands and wives, when they work together, like the, their chemistry is not, you know. Um, but I do believe that Joe and I had really, really good chemistry. And, you know, there was just a lot of, there's a lot of trust there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of places in the process where you, where you can laugh at yourself, at the situation, and in a play like The Normal Heart, you really need your sense of humor and act, you know, because it's you know, deeply devastating play. You won the Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in that play, and, and someone in our chat room, Owen Daly, wants to know how it felt to win that Tony. There's a chat room? Yeah, we have a chat room. We have a couple of people who are, who are watching this live. Oh, sweet. Um, what was Owen's? Hi, Owen. Uh, what, was, what, were your, what was Owen's question? He wants to know what it was like to win the Tony Award for the Normal Heart. Uh, well, I mean, you know, well, uh, it, was, it was fucking great. <laughs> it, was, it was fantastic. I mean, you know, it was surreal. I had to be up at 6.30 that next morning and, and go out to Stanford to shoot. And, you know, uh, Laura Linney made that such a great time for me because, like, I got to work that day and they had a huge cake on set. And a lot of the crew and some of our directors, I never mentioned that I was doing this play because doing a play in New York and shooting a TV show by day is kind of like being married and, you know, and having a mistress. You, you don't want to tell your wife how great it is to go see your mistress. And <laughs> your mistress doesn't want to know how great a lay your wife is. Um, so, uh, so... The fact that I was even able to do the play at all, Owen, and then get nominated and then win and have to work all through that process, uh, I just, every now and then when I allow myself to think about it, I just hope I was as present as I want, you know, as I tried to be because I was in so many different places at once. But it was, uh, it was such a great ensemble in that play. I loved that play so much. And, you know, to, it's so impossible to avoid cliches. To get something like that for it, then, you know, I won't lie. Of course I dreamed about winning a Tony Award. Who, who in the theater ha hasn't? Uh, it, was like, it was like just so much gravy. It was like just such a great cherry on top of what was already a pretty substantial cupcake. Uh, did, did you bring the Tony Award with you back onto the set of the Big C and just like show it off everywhere? I have it with me right now? No. Um, <laughs> no, I did not. I did not do that. I, uh, I, um, I don't think I did. I'm certainly not that arrogant. No, I didn't. I, but there was a really big party and the crew, we were all, you know, look, we, we, th that crew and cast of actors loved each other so much and everybody bent over backwards to make sure I would be able to get to the stage door every night. The, the, the Normal Heart started out, it was going to be sort of like a concert reading, you know, like uh, the vagina monologues or, you know, where people sit at music stands and kind of be a rotating cast. And this, it evolved very quickly in this kind of volcanic-like hum 
situation and became a, a, a fully staged production very quickly. So all too suddenly I realized I was going to have to be two places at once if I really wanted to have both experiences. And that, that cast and crew bent over backwards to get me out the door every night. Um, so it was a great celebration, even though I did not bring my Tony Award and flaunt it. Tonys are very, they're like, you know, this, they're, 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 they're small. So I could have carried it, whereas an Emmy, you know, you're like, yeah. <laughs> my partner is uh, a writer on Modern Family, and uh, he's won uh, Jeff Richman, and he's won Emmys, and uh, of course, for that wonderful show. We, he actually wrote an episode uh, that Cam and Mitch, that's based on us, about their competing uh, uh, prize sizes. Oh, wow. Yeah, movie. I remember that. Yeah, that's totally based on us because he was like, I'm going to bring one of my Emmys to New York. And I was like, uh, no, you're not because it's, it's, it, it's like, you know, powers over. It looks like it's going to kill the Tony. You know, grab <laughs> the Tony. It's too big. He eventually did. It's also okay. Uh, well, um, now that you finished work on the Big C, can you tell us about any future projects you have lined up or are trying to line up? Uh, I um, no, actually, I'm gainfully unemployed, and I'm uh, uh, taking the summer off. Basically, I have a lot of family stuff. I have a very big birthday coming up on June 25th. I'm going to London to see uh, uh, my friend Sam Mendes directed uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I'm going to see that on my birthday. Um, and uh, no, I, I would love to do another TV show. I did a, a wonderful pilot for the CW that unfortunately didn't get picked up. Um, but I, you know, I've had such a great ride as Sean, man. It, it's, it's just been such a wonderful, completely out there, left of center experience as an actor, you know, that uh, it, it's going to, you know, I, I think I'm going to have to breathe a little bit before I decide what's next or the universe will show me what's next. You know, I, 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 I want to kind of just... Um, relish the last season of the big C and um, you know that's just a long way of saying I, I don't have a job dude <laughs> I, I hopefully will one of these days uh, well, I well to do a play I mean you know mm -hmm. doing plays or you, you think it's like I think it's probably like childbirth I mean I can't speak personally but you know they say if you remembered what it was like to have a kid you'd never do it more than once and and doing plays are so um, you know, expensive and exhausting that you think when you finish one, never again. And then a script falls into your lap and you're like, well, I can't pass this up. And, you know, I'd love for that to happen too. So we'll see. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time. I wish you and the Big C the best of luck at, at the Emmys. Uh, uh, fingers crossed that it gets in there. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and, and good luck with everything else, you know, theater, film, TV. and, and Thank you very much. Thanks for teaching me how to Google chat. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Yeah, Google Hangout. Google Hangout. Thanks for hanging out on Google with me. <laughs> no problem. Have a All good right. day. Bye-bye. Take care.